ask for anything. It was after he had given some sacrifices to God. And after giving a sacrifice, he wasn't giving so that he wanted God to straight away do something for him. He was giving God as a result of loving God. In that same chapter, the Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord. And the following verse, that's when he went to sacrifice. Sacrifices are birthed by love. You love God and then you give to God. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Love is always followed by sacrifices. When you love a man, you, you sacrifice for the man. Am I talking to somebody? So he went to sacrifice. He was sacrificing not in order for him to get anything. It was a manifestation of his love towards God. And he said, I will honor God with my substance. And he's bringing some burnt offerings before the Lord. And what you see Solomon giving to God is not in the spirit. This was a physical sacrifice. Kettles were given to God and sacrificed and they bled physically. And then what happened after that physical activity? It was a spiritual activity. And then God came to Solomon and they were now having this conversation. What shall I give to you? And Solomon is asking for understanding. And after the entire uh, conversation, Solomon, that's when he realized that it was in a dream. It's, this is happening in a dream. Look at me, all of you here. This, what you've just read now, it's a dream. The conversation took place in a place called a dream. He was dreaming. God came to him and spoke to him in a dream. Gave him an opportunity to ask for anything in a dream. And he asked for understanding of the heart in a dream. How do you get that right? Uh, please help me now on this one. How do you, how do you, how do you get visited by God in a dream and then you are so accurate to ask for the right thing in a dream? Where you know that most of you, once you start dreaming, you, you lose control. You are not in charge of your dream. You have had several dreams before where opportunities were given to you to choose and until you woke up. Some of you, you were even angry because, because you said, I was given an opportunity. Somebody came to me and said, choose. And I was trying to choose until I woke up. It means you are not in control even of your dreams. How can God ask you? And you ask for the most important thing that would require you to be conscious. In a dream, you are so in charge. You know the most important, even in a dream, you still have the ability to discern between good and bad. Before the ability is even given to you, you still can make a decision before the grace is given. To choose between bad and good before that ability to discern is given, you already can discern. And you are asking for the right thing before even the grace is given to you. Ah, no, please, sit down. Let me, let me show you something, and then I'll close. What sort of an ability is this? Where a man can be asked, <laughs> what, what, what sort of an ability is this? I want you to look at something here. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse number 2. You will see where his strength was coming from. Song of Solomon chapter 5 and verse number 2. <laughs> Look at his ability. That's Solomon. I sleep, but my heart worketh. Now, that's Solomon for you now. He's explaining what happens to him when he goes to sleep. When I go to sleep, leave the rest. Don't mind the rest. Look at this man when he goes to sleep. <laughs> His heart is so active. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's saying. 
He knows what to ask for. So I make right decisions even in bed, not just in the office, even in bed. From tonight when you go home to sleep, <laughs> your heart shall be so active. Am I talking to somebody here? This is not starting tomorrow. I'm saying this night, that is ahead of you now. You go to bed, you sleep, but at the same time, you are so spiritually active. Some of us, we have had these opportunities before where God gave us this offer to ask him for anything. And yet, even when we are, we are awake, some of us, we are still asking for wrong things. This man is in the bed. He's sleeping. And God is saying, what should I give you now? And he asks for the most important thing. Why? Because his heart doesn't go to bed. We are looking for sons and daughters like that. Who can never be caught unaware. Very active. You know what is happening outside even when you are sleeping. You are paying attention. You know who is approaching your house. You know what is going to happen in the next five minutes. Can, do you, do, I, I don't know. Can, can such a miracle be performed? Where a man can go to bed and yet his heart is so active. <laughs> sit down. Sit down. Sit down. That's the only way you can be in control and in charge of your dreams. That is the only way. <laughs> I saw something in the word of God which amazed me. And up to now, you see, the day when I saw it, I sat down, I said, Holy Spirit, what is this now? <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> There's a scripture in the Bible that says, everything that a man does, it seems right according to his own interpretation. But God wears the spirits. What a man does, everything that you find yourself doing, it is right. It is the right thing to do according to your own interpretation. But God has an ability to wear, wear, put on a scale, the spirits. When I saw it, I said to you, I, listen, I sat down, I said, Holy Spirit, I don't, what is this now? God has an ability, he has the instrument, he has the gadget that wears spirits. How can you wear a spirit if there is no density? Spirits can be weighed in cages. That's Proverbs chapter 16 for you. Proverbs chapter 16 verse number 2. I never knew that sp my spirit can be weighed in cages and in tons and in grams. I thought that all of us, we are the same. I thought that every member of our ministry are at the same level. I thought that every called man of God are the same. And yet God is saying, I have that gadget that can take a man's spirit and know how much you weigh in terms of weight. Imagine if you had that instrument before you choose a man of God. Imagine if you had that gadget before you join a ministry. The ability to wear a man's spirit. Ah, sit down. Some people's spirits are lightweight, some are heavyweight. When you begin to be in charge and in control of your dreams, you know the right decisions to make even when you go to sleep. That calls for 
better cages in the spirit. You have to become a heavyweight in the spirit. <laughs> when I saw this, I sat down. I said, the guy in the garden, I'm saying, the guy in the garden, I hit it. Muno, muno ye ramweya. Mwari muno pima mweya. Murugundu zaudi pa njiga pano na mwari munevano wa nema tanzi, nema nema keiji, nema nema gram. E mweya, muno pima mweya o munu. Hakuna kutaroka. Ipapo zambo tanga zanzi, chese cha itu kwa ne munu kwa hari chaka mnakira. Mwari wawo ya wawo na chirukunzi chaka naka no munu. Wote wawo right leka ndi pime mwe ya wawo na wote ndi osaka achiti chaka naka. Isera re mwe ya. If you are driving a broken car and you are so convinced that that broken car is a good thing, it is the weight of your spirit. That is how much you weigh in the spirit. If you want to continue renting from one house to another house, and you, you convince yourself that that is a normal exercise, it is coming from the weight of your spirit. Because everything that a man does, and he's convinced that he's doing the right thing, God goes further into weighing the spirit of a man. And then God says, okay, that's why this guy the problem is with the weight of his spirit. Kaona shita mombe mbiri. Mombe. Mbiri. 